right y'all l famous living my life not thinking about it twice today is a legendary joint right here i'm talking to the big og man yeah the big og shaquel you heard he in the building today man l famous tv yo shot highlight the people man let me know man shaquel aka cold red man back at it again keep it humble but we're gonna talk that talk yeah, B. Now, um, this is my first time meeting you, talking to you, whatever. You heard, you know what I'm saying? And um, um, it's the reason why you, you know, you reached out to me. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I gave a story the other day with my guy Mo Dog. You heard that's family. My guy C H Castle Hill, and um, he he, you could tell that he was there. Everything happened like it was, but he had the story a little mixed up. So Shaquel, being that he was the big dog, he was there. He was there for um the first riot. Or whatever, and he know how everything started. He gonna give his piece on that. But before we we get into all that, we gonna talk about Rikers Island, 1982, 19 from 1982 to 89. Because um, I, I don't think the people know about that. Them years, b. You know what I'm saying? So um, the other day, yesterday, I threw up a picture of a, of a dude. I ain't know where he was from. You heard? I just know the dude had on three shines. He jonesing on the phone. He got the gazelles on. You heard? And um, I, 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 I thought it would, I thought it would be good to say, not say where I thought he was from, cause I, I originally thought he was from Brooklyn. He looked like a Brooklyn dude, but I didn't want to say he was from Brooklyn in the video. I wanted to throw it in the air, and just like I threw it in the air, man, people was like, yo, he from, nah, that that dude from Far Rockaway, nah, that dude from Lower East Side. But Shaquel was the first dude. That jumped in the comment and said, nah, that's that's that dude from BK, best style. That's little just that four main. And you stand on that, right, bro? I definitely stand on that. So there's another, there's another person in the comments made Hellcat Dog Man. That, that's my bro Sean. He's from Faggy Projects. Um, he came through around the same time. Well, he came through at the same time. At that period of time, he was in four main with Justin. So that's definitely four main. I was in two main down the hall. Mm. That's crazy. And you said that was 84, you believe? No, that's definitely 84. I didn't believe that's definitely 84. And, 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 and Jess was fighting, probably fighting the body? Uh, Jess, Jess had went home and came back. I don't exactly remember what he came back for the second time. Jess was doing robberies too, man. So it probably was a robbery chase. Jess never made, never made a, a top for a body or nothing. Oh, all right. Oh, yo, one thing you said, you told me um off air, you said, you said, you said, um, just was a little dude, and you said back in those days, the big dudes used to hold down, brother, was like just. Yeah, but you had to be already, you had to already be putting in work and, and show that you know you, you with the shit. And mm -hmm. just was yeah. the two, the two little, I'm saying the three, there's about three little dudes in Portland that was real small that was putting in. Lil Shadell from Corny Island, Shad to Shadell, he was, he was putting in work. He had a team, they like six co like six co defendants all together. They came through for a murder case. So that was putting it on. But then you had Lil Just, you had 50 Cent. The difference between 50 Cent and Lil Just was 50 Cent was like a troublemaker. He was like 5'3", but he had a big mouth and he started a lot of problems and shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? 50 Cent was the type of dude that he'll snatch your chain. I don't care how big you is, because he know the dudes around him going to pop on you soon as you try to come back at him. You know what I mean? So he do stuff like that knowing he had backing. You know what I'm saying? But that's why he was so wild. He got away with everything. Lil Just was more, he was on some gangster shit, but... He was more like he had his own jury, his own cadet, everybody really robbing dudes like that. But Just was just flamboyant and he's holding down some dog body shit. But Just gets busy, he put that pick in you quick though. When you say he's from the star? Yeah, he's from, he from Notion Avenue around the star and he's being crying high sometimes. Mm. Yeah. So be, you know, Notion Avenue go right straight through crying high into bad star. So you was heavy on the island at that time in C74 with Justin them. Wait, somebody as far as heavy as far as what? Like, I mean, I mean, you was with the shits, you was, you was running around. <laughs> I came through 82. I had, I remember exactly I had some 
from uh, YSL gene. That's when he first was coming out with the gene with the YSL in the pocket. Give us some Manhattan shit. But, um, Bird off of Goodman's had him and motherfucking all uh, the other shit on Fifth, uh, Fifth Avenue, 59th Street. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I can't think of the name. They had so I had that on. I had a burgundy suede front and some burgundy British walkers, and I had a I had a Christian Dior. I never forget it. And uh, dude, 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 want to fight me for it? And I think you have to you know, fight for your shit. Like dude, approach you, you want to do for your shit? We're gonna fight. Some dudes are soft, like ah, I don't want no problem. You can have it. Yo, bro, I had nine fights in two days, bro. I ain't, I ain't won none of them shit, El Famous. Word the mother? I word the I ain't won none of them shit. Where that was at, 82 in the New Jack house? Yeah. Or nah, all over? I went to the, I went to the quad. I was in, um, I think I was in six upper and shit. And I, I wanna stab him through the third day. I stabbed him through named Kev Webb from Green Boy. Another stocky dude, two gold fronts. But what happened is, uh, dudes just don't, see, back then they had, they had rules, man. Dudes, they just move on you like that. Mm-hmm. You came out with whatever, you know they do? They go to the, they would, they you go to the mess hall to see who you know in the building. To see, you got to see that might be people that there. So mm-hmm. now I go to the mess hall, a lot of guards knew me from being all over. I'm talking about even Bronx, Queens, Staten Island, everywhere. And they's like, oh shit, shot well, please go. Oh, you finally turned 16? These dudes already like 19 years old. At that time, adolescents go up to 21. They didn't start 19 years old until 1987. But back then, we up to 21, so he's like, you got dudes up there, we got full hair in their face, they've been up north and came back home, went back to the island, you feel me? Mm. So, so they saying, yo, they shout me out, I know all the right people, so now the dudes that run my house, they saying, yo, that's my man right there, yo, that's my man from Fort Green, Brooklyn, he represent, but yo, make sure you get fair ones. So they're not saying, yo, that's my man, that's been happening to my man, he's good, and then you good, no. They let me know, make sure you get a fair one, because niggas might jump you if you got the right shit they want. Best in the Browns, nigga, they was on it. So I go back to the house, I got posted by one dude, yo, what you want to do for your shit? Play the corner. And the thing is this, though, El Famous, that if, if, if you a fish you dude and fish you dudes know you, they'll tell you play the corner for your shit. Mm-hmm. But if you dudes, if you a bird or a duck or whatever they called you back then, you have to give your shit up. But if you was a fish you know, but Ooh, they let you keep your shit just for fighting back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like static. It was like a certain static. So I, I lost the first. I'm 16. These dudes are already 19, 18. They've been up north and ate mad bread and potatoes and worked out. I'm a skinny, scrawny nigga, you mm-hmm. When I'm back, I, walk, I lost the first fight, a little bust of lip. They let me get a little rest. The hour later, we go to child. We come back from child. Love nigga. Hey, nothing. Yo, what's up? You want to do for that jacket and shit, bro? So what you want to do? So all right, go. So we go and the poison up the um, bubble. Went to the day room. And we fought in the day room. He, you know, he got the best of me and shit. When I said, Lord, it wasn't my last lot, but, you know, they basically won. If you had to take points on that, I'd probably lost. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like That's crazy, out, you know? man. Everybody went through the same system on that island, man. Everybody no, went through that same but, system. But nobody was 16 like me. Everybody was 19, 20. <laughs> like, damn. No, that's what, so, what I mean, Sha, is we all got that same story because I was 16, too, and they threw me in, the, in, the, in there with the wolves and the killers. You heard? Yeah. Everybody in my house had a body. Everybody in my house had a body. You heard? Like that. They on it. So, you know, after that, you know, I, after that, you leave you alone. So, you know, so the dude that ran the house, I went to the mess hall the next day. He said, yo, what's up, my mess? He said, nah, he fought back. Yo, we gave him some stuff. They gave him some cookies, all this shit. Yo, he good, he good, man. He fought back and all that. So, now everything was good. Then the third day, this dude at the A and B gate coming in, coming out the bank. They're like, oh, shit. Nigga's like, yo, that's Ken Webb. I'm breathing for you. He's coming in now. Ken Webb's about maybe... 19 at the time, maybe 19, 18, 19. He'd been up north before, a little stocky, short, looked like just ice in the face from the Bronx. He mm-hmm. had two gold fronts on his front. So he comes up. I, I got a pick. My man gave me a pick. I got a pick on. So he come in the house, looking at everybody's school. I knew who he was, so he was like bowing out. Except the fish group that he knew, they knew him. They, they had the same respect level. So now we're in day room, and that night, he came up. He said, yo, man, who this dude right here? Like, he, he, he. He, he probably did a little homework, find out those people, but he ain't give a fuck. Yo, who this dude, right? He got this dude in this oh, fucking burgundy, some um, suede front, these brand new Britishes, man. Yo, what's up, man? What's your name? I said, yo, what? I said, yo, man, what's going on? What's up? He said, what you mean, what's up, man? Yo, what you want to do for that do for that suede front so we can fight? He said, nah, I ain't into fight, nigga. I ain't into fight. I'm into other shit. And as soon as he said that shit, hell famous, mm-hmm. I, pulled, I pulled that pick out and gave it to him. You'd be surprised, bro, how many dudes that talk and talk on, but they get that. Because a lot of dudes wasn't used to, you know, being on the um the defensive side. The offense. receiving in. Yeah, so they, they got that receiving, and he's like, yo, he, he was running around the table, and I'm hitting the door, like four times, and he's seen it. That's the first time I 
they, they, they booked a different house and gave me a ticket. I had to go to the thing. Back then, bullshit days in the thing. Like get 10 to 30 days. 30 days was the match you could get. You know what I mean? 80, you oh, talking about 82? 82, yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that 30 days was the max up until a long time until they turned it to 90 days. You know what I'm saying? In 82, the Bing was still the Bing. Yeah, the Bing, but the Bing was different places at different times. Like, by time, maybe, I don't know what it is when y'all was coming through, but that went from um, one, one, um, one main, one upper, and one, one low was, uh, they made it, they made it ad seg over the years around 86, but before that, it just, you know, it was PC on one side. And, and PC, the fast fight, both sides of PC. But well, one main and one upper was the main thing back in the days. And then when I, I went home and came back, uh, the main thing was one and one and one and one one main one upper and six lower, I believe. Yeah. Mm. And wh yeah. what type of dudes was in there? What type of any name brand dudes that we know about? Eighty two. Yeah. Um, definitely. I was a four man with Blue Boy. Mm -hmm. Old my man Dark Hell. Puerto Rican Duquan, he was God body too. Uh, my comedy D. Williams was in there. Uh, Mikey Whitey from Foreground, my way was there. You had uh, Just, you had Tony Rome, Cy Green, that same person. Uh, Larry, his comedy Larry, it's, it's like a whole bunch of people that was there, man. Had heavy hitters that was there back then. Jimmy Lee, the 12 o'clock crew was there. That was his posse name. 12 o'clock crew, he's from 183rd Crescent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now back, back then with the Bronx, it's like two streets you heard frequently in the Bronx. That's 183rd was the word, and 169. Those were the two hottest blocks that you heard about, yeah? Mm, that's <laughs> real. So it got to the point where everybody was claiming they was either 183rd. Yeah. Or I'm like, oh, Universe in the Bronx lived on 169th and 183rd? What's up? Nobody didn't know where else? Like, everybody was like, oh, who you from? I'm 183rd. Where you from? Uh, I'm from uh, 160. I mean, 169. I'm from the 9 crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you crew, yeah? Yeah. It was crazy. But, you know, it wasn't that much wolf packing back then. And razors didn't really come out. The first time I really seen a razor, for like 83, first one I seen the bullpen spit out of the mouth of this dude named Blue Cam, Puerto Rican kid named Blue Cam. And used some heavy hitters, Spanish dudes back too, like Mario Machete was down the island with us, um, SP, um, 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 Buckwheat from Bushwick. Yeah, I like, keep hearing about Buckwheat. And then, then you had, I remember you had the wars and shit, the uh, Bronx and Brooklyn wars. And a lot of times Queens rolled with Brooklyn and Harlem to roll with Bronx and shit. I wasn't involved with that shit because I, I hang in the Bronx. I was, I was in FIBO. I seen you put a shit about the FIBO. I was in the original FIBO and it was like about 167 and River Ave. Right down yeah, the exactly. Yeah, so I used to go to the original FIBO. So I'd I be in the Bronx. I'd I be in the T-Connection on White Plain. I'd be everywhere. So I was trying to get involved with that Brooklyn Bronx shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I never was with it. But I remember that shit was getting crazy at one time. But you had um, Shakoma from the Bronx. You had motherfucking Mitch from the Bronx. You had uh, a lot of... There's so many people's names go all day with them shit. But they they was regulating shit. It was a big war. And I'm not forget my man Caesar, he's Spanish and shit. Mm -hmm. He was he was in a black house and Spanish dude, like, yo, he's in a um, mixed house in Spanish. Yo, there's a war going on. What's up? You gotta start cutting motherfucking um black dudes. You're like, man, I ain't with that shit. I'm from East New York from the Paradise, nigga. I fuck with blacks. And they wind up cutting him real bad and shit. He went off. I ain't gonna front he stabbed a few dudes over that, but you know, that's the type of shit going on. But it wasn't really it wasn't like as bad as I'm gonna say the bad the, the worst years of Bronx and Brooklyn probably with, with, with John Rambo on the days, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah, 90. That, because back then, it, it was more house against house back then. Two men against four upper, four up against four lower. Mm -hmm. So all the two, one, two dudes from two to the house have a beef, and they both know, and that's not the whole house for you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you came up with Majesty out of Brooklyn. Ma Majesty a little younger than me. Majesty came up after me. Majesty came to jail for his first. That Casey guy was his first time getting arrested to go into the island. I mean, he'd been arrested before, but really did the time in the island, laying up for a body. Mm -hmm. And I think he got. In the '85, going into '86, but I think more or more so in the '85. I was already come north by then. Was Hey Cabessa up with you? Hey Cabessa was down here back then, '82, '83. Hell yeah! Oh, all right. Oh, so you oh you came up? Oh, Cabessa was on the island with you too. Cabessa was down. Hell yeah! And he was the he same was, way. Same way, nothing changed. He still was wild. <laughs> Yo, B, I know the '80s was crazy. That's, that's, Best of the wild, look at that dead arm too. Was but was it was it a lot of um a lot of the, that sexual predators on the island at that time or that nah. that wasn't in New York's um on the island. Nah, you know where that really really was the worst at in C seventy six for whatever reason. The dudes get one year and they ready to fuck everything. I don't understand how the fucking niggas flip over here. Yeah, yeah. Maybe hit you, bro. It's already in you, bro. They ain't just starting pieces up because they know in the world. They get one year. The C seventy six was infested with that. 
I don't be doing shit like this, but my shit was straight up straight beds, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But even on the, on the four building, they really ain't going like that, but it happens. It definitely happened. It was definitely happening, but not like that crazy. And nobody, I don't know nobody really that got raped like that. It, it's basically dudes start fucking with niggas that's already with, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Only reason why I say that, because, you know, back when niggas was younger, dudes used to be thinking, like, when you, when you think about prison or jail, I, I remember that movie, Penitentiary. Remember that joint? Yeah, remember that shit. Yeah, so that... I, they, they, they used to be scaring dudes on TV when, when they mention movies. They always show a dude getting raped. You know what I'm saying? So they they, they program that in our heads. You heard? You know what I'm saying? I, I, but I it was like, happening though. I remember like one incident, maybe some rape shit happened on the island. But for the most part, it was just dudes. You know, they was creeping doing it. But it wasn't a lot. Like up north, up north was infested. Right? I was, remember, we adolescents. The adults might have been doing different. Yeah. There's a lot of guard bodies there and all that. I have to say a lot of guards. In, in turn, go up north and start fucking around too. But on an island, nah, it was too small. Everybody know everybody. And most everybody was on the even side. They didn't have all them domes. Like, by the time you came to jail, they had already made holes in the wall and put new mods and mod nine, all that stuff. They didn't have all that. All yeah. we had back then, on the odd side, was, was uh, PC. And you had bug out, MO unit, and some other shit. Nobody was on that. Five billion, I don't know what the fuck was back then. All the regular people was on the even side. And mm. all you had them. Was this? You had first of the, first coming down the hallway. You had two lower, two main, two upper. After that, you had no. You had two dorm. No, you had two dorm. After that, after two dorm, you had four lower, four four main, and four upper. And then you had four dorm after that. And then you had six lower, six main. So that's all you had. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Okay? And a lot of us was in the woman. A lot of us went to the seventy three, which is called a woman house back then, because. Females are still over there. You don't want to hear about that. Oh, yeah, I heard, I heard the females in the, in the adolescents used to be together. Bro, yeah. And, well, not in the four building, but in 73. That was actually the woman house, but they had the section for guys, bro. Yeah, that had to be the best of my best of my years ever in prison, bro. And I hate to say I, I had the best time in prison, but, but I went to the woman house. I was working in the mess hall. You're working in the mess hall with the females. The guys and females together. And when the, when the line break down and they clean it up, the police being in a bubble, like three police, one that worked in one end of one of the line, other worked the, the male side of the line, then you had the A officer. They in the bubble eating and talking the door closed. Do you know how many closets and motherfucking uh uh, uh, uh um, ice boxes and, and different shit? You niggas and they fucking girls crazy in there. We was going crazy in there, bro. <laughs> right, we, they never you know, after that it was no it wasn't loose like that no more after eighty eight after say after eighty six it got a little more stiff. But back then your girls getting pregnant like crazy. Crazy, bro. I heard but about I, that, B. That's crazy right there, B. You know what I'm saying? You cut. And y'all used to go to school together, too, right? School, brother, too. I went to school, too. I went to school um, two times. First, they had the dorms going to school. They had, uh, they had uh, what was the other building? 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 What was the the dudes in the rough houses, somebody came with that bright idea, put them in the school, they need to exert their energy on some other shit like education or something. So they talking about, yo, we're gonna start them. We like, we ain't going no fucking school. We was protesting until we found out the girls gonna be there with us. Oh nah, I'm going to school, bro. Now that was a whole other fiesta. Like you in the classroom with girls, and let's say one of the, one of the teachers bang out and their room is closed. Man, you just take that you just have a girl go in the bathroom, tell the teacher you're going to the bathroom. And the girl say, I'm going to the bathroom, or your girl might be in another room and she go to the bathroom, they'll meet. And yo, the, the police are the best. He around the front. He don't even know what's going around the corner. You sneak around the corner, use an ID card, ID card, to jimmy the door open, and go up in the closet. You, fuck, you, got, you got little leather coats on and jackets, but that's on the floor. That's the mattress, bro. And you smash it right there. Like, it was crazy. That shit was like school. That shit was like high school. Yeah, bro. It was loose, bro. Or, but mm. the best for the best. Can't get no better than that. And then you say about 86, that's when they started putting the strict tight on this shit. And it, they started, they started like, moving like, like, like doing a little more separation, but in '86 was still somewhat easy. They wasn't working together no more. But like, say you and I was in Seven Main, and let's say the female, they, they they got sick call time. So when the females go to sick call, I just tell the police, yo, let me go out, sweep the hallway, walk around, see my people down the hall. All right, give me, I get the broom, let me out. But what I do, I sneak in, I I I make the staircase. The female comes from medication. Just got a bang on the staircase, and somebody come and bust you. Fuck it, you know niggas don't even stop. They're like, yo, I'm like, oh my bad, my bad, pardon me. They just turn back around, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
and this female be on the pass. I'm just down the hallway. Like, if you, if you, if you dudes in the hallway and shit, as long as you, like, you know, the police, they know you and shit, you, you get, I'm gonna get out and see my man down the hall. They, already, they know what was going on, I believe, though. They probably didn't, though. Cause that, was the, that was the way to get out. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. So, Wait, but my other shit I heard, though, was little, um, oh, man, I can think another little brother, he was small. He had a couple of quarters, I can't think of his name right now. The, the females gave him a wig. Well, his girl he was fucking with named Angie gave him a wig, so and she gave him a jumpsuit. He was small, so he could fit female jumpsuit. So they had medication. They had the door wide open. They they stuck him in the house, and the police wasn't looking. He had the same outfit they had, the beige, and they had the wig on. And she walked right in the door like with the girl went to sell with her. But then he couldn't make it back out. He got stuck. That was history. That was legendary history right there. there. A nigga snuck into the girl <laughs> door. They sales, sales, but they, they gave him a jumpsuit. They gave him the sentence girl. They had sentence. They said they had the civilian clothes. They had the jumps. They gave him the, um, the jumpsuit, and they gave him the wig. This nigga stuck in the house, and, and they, they had him in there for a while. But then the doors locked. Everybody came. They, they, took, they took too long, and the doors locked, and he couldn't get back out. Or they was trying to check through everything. Yo, see your song, this man. Oh, but I'm just making up a name right now. Yo, crack the gate when it go out between the hall. No, it's been done already. Oh, man. And then count time was coming, you heard? Mm-hmm. He had to go, man. And he got shipped out the, out the woman house after that, though. He couldn't get out. He had to, he had to come clean to the lady. Oh, yo, I ain't supposed to be here. I'm a god. So what year you say that they separated at the men from the women? Uh, well, I... Probably like 80, 89, 88. 80, 87, it was, like, they were still doing it. They were still doing the medication shit. I think around 88, when they opened the Rose and Singer, a lot of females left the building. The only thing was left now, well, now they had the whole building for guys. The only females in there way on the other end. That's the maternity, the maternity ward. The females are pregnant, you right? mm -hmm. yeah, You can't get to them. So I'll say 88. So they built Rose and Singer in 88. That's when everybody started. All the females started leaving, yeah? So what year did you turn to Delt? I turned to Delt. Remember, when I turned to Delta was 87, I was 21. But after that, that same year, toward the end of the year, they started making it 19, you turned to Delta. Yeah. But then, you had Donald Dude, they still was, they still was, they still was saying they was 17, 18, was getting locked up to go back to the Portland and run that shit, yeah? Yeah. Mr. P. Shoe Shot. Yeah, that's, that's probably why Shoe with God bless the dead. Shoe with him, you probably used to do that, you heard? Because, like you said, it used to be 21. I didn't know that. Because when I came, to, I went through in 91, it was 19. 19, yeah. Well, when you turn 19, you leave. Yeah. Back then, 21, you leave. Yeah. I, they sent me to him in June of, uh, June of 87. They kicked me right out. And what was that like, bro? How different was that from the four building? Or was it I mean, the same thing? It's not a little bit different. A lot of older people... Maybe try to stab this dude when I got in the house because this dude tried some bullshit with me and shit, trying to line me up and shit. So I just got him first Spanish dude. He looked at white, but he was Spanish. Louis Arena, they call him Scotty and shit. He had two scars on the side of his face and shit. What did he try to line you up for? Because I had jewelry on. I came over there with three, like three chains, two pieces. I had uh, two rings, I believe, a watch. I had a uh, bulletproof watch. And, um, the nigga was trying to line me up, so I think that night they was going to plan to get me, but they would see if I'm the type of dude that'll react to a, to a crisis. So what they did was, I go to, I go to child, I go to uh, child, this dude, the fire, I'm trying to see Bush, and Big Jamel was supposed to be in the building, but I didn't know Big Jamel left. So I went to the child, and I come back, all my shit in my cell is gone. I'm like, what the fuck, my shit ass over, I'm in the wrong cell. I went to the next cell, now they, my, my cell was right here. All my shit was gone, so what they doing, L Famous, they took my shit to try to find out. If I'm gonna react and get busy or not. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm more shrewd thinker. I went to the middle gate to the B side and asked my man for a gun. He said, have one. The nigga that heard me passed me, he said, I got one for you. He heard I, got, I said, this dude, they took my shit. But I'm gonna hit the nigga that run the house because, and my thing in the fourth building, when we had houses, nobody snuck me nothing unless the heads know about it, yeah? Yeah. So if somebody stuck in my shit, you had to okay it. So I was going straight to him. So nigga gave me a bang, I sharpened it, but then the dude tried to approach me later and said, yo, I heard somebody, uh, Took your shit like about an hour later. I'm trying to calculate it right because I see how this dude had the house in control. And now I ain't dealing with no football no more. I'm dealing with the Delts, even though I was up north in Clinton and all that. Mm. I'm still dealing with Allen. I'm like, the way the situation is, it's a lot of people there and a lot of people like they was like really under him. So I'm like, God damn, it's a lot of people. It's 80 sales at HDN. That's not counting the top floors as closed. We're talking about the first two floors. First gallery is, is 20 sales, and then second gallery, 20 sales. And then the third gallery and fourth gallery, 20 cells. Mm. So, yeah, I know. I've been in the eighth. Yeah, That's so crazy. I'm like, 
a lot of people and everybody walking all over the place. So I got it calculated. So I said, fuck it. I told the dude, Scotty, I said, yo, let me talk just a minute. What's up? I said, listen, man. People told me this your house, man. So I'm trying to find out what's going on with my stuff. He like, yo, what you talking about? I said, yo, my stuff is gone. He's like, listen, man, you know, I don't know about your stuff, but, you know, this is just this the Adele. You know, you came from the Forbilland, you know, all now. He don't even know I've been up north already with Adele's up north. and been up north already. Elmira, Clinton, all that, yeah? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, no doubt. So listen, man, if you can, it's like I play the helmet. If you can get my shit back, you know, I go down this week. I'm about to get the mother law. I'm getting dope. I'm getting motherfucking weed, a lot of weed. I'm getting a lot of dope. I'm make this money. We can make money together. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I'm about to go down and shit this week. Boom. So now, any thoughts he had on getting my chain back, I think they want to see how I react to the whole stolen property stuff and then try to line it for later and just brush up on me and get me, right? Mm-hmm. But when I said that drug shit, that shit stopped, you heard? Yeah. He's like, okay, so yeah, I get the mother load. I'm getting like four, five, six grams of dope at a time, man. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He like the money part. Yo, you need to do something. I see, I need my stuff back. I'm gonna see what I can do about that. Yo, like 20 minutes later, all my shit came back to my cell, yeah? <laughs> Missing with some food. Excuse me, ate some food and shit, but all my clothes. Like, then we had towels and all that shit, pajamas. Towel lacing your cell up. They stopped all that over the years, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, I got my shit back. So then I went to, we went to the shower, and then my man, that was on the station, yo, let me tell you something. The dudes don't even like him over there. Girl, they scared him. But if you get in that nigga ass, chances are, it's going to fall back to them this shit. I said, all right, so I waited. He went to the shower. He came back with a white bucket. Mm-hmm. And he had, oh, that's like my second incident with a shower situation. But he's coming up the, up the corridor, coming to the, in the back section where Spanish people at. And I met him halfway. He had like a nice little rope chain with his uh, the name place at April. I guess it was his girl. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, let me talk to you a minute. So what's up? So you listen, man. I appreciate getting my shit back, but all the other shit I was talking about, yo, if you think I'm paying to get my shit back, it ain't going to happen, man. So. So what you want to do? He said, what you mean what I'm going to do? He said, yo, listen, you ain't going to make it out of here. Like, he tried to bluff him with that. You ain't going to make it out of here. This, this is my house. I'm facing 75 years. He said, all types of shit had nothing to do with nothing. Oh, famous, Jerry. Mm-hmm. I'm facing 75 years. Everybody in here. I said, listen, man, fuck all that. And I just snatched the chain off his neck. And I pulled out the motherfucking pick I had that somebody gave it from the other side. And I started swinging. He was trying to fight back and all that shit at first. But he had slippers on. He had motherfucking pajama bottoms on. And I was giving it to him. And the dude, you know, he, after a while, he gave in. Nobody was helping him. He said, get him, get him, get him. And nobody was doing shit. Mm-hmm. And that, my man said it was true. Niggas ain't even like that. Dude. They was glass mic got him. And that nigga ran toward the gate. The lady pulled, opened the gate. Come on, come on, come on. He ran out. And they closed the gate back. They, crushed, they had to squat on the way and shit. They lost it. I stayed in the house for like a day or two. Then I see that nigga at the hearing and shit. I didn't know he was in the hearing. I was the adjustment committee. I'm sitting down, talking to this dude, Tone from Franklin Avenue. We talked about C-73 days back in 80, 80, 84, right? Mm-hmm. 85. And then this nigga come out the office and I ain't know he went to the hearing before me. And he looking at me, I'm looking at him, I'm sitting on the edge of the chair. He hit up against the wall like eight, like seven feet away from me, eight feet away from me. And I just smirked at the nigga like, on some yeah, she slept on me, boy. Man, that nigga came off the wall so fast, snuffed the shit out of me. Mm. I was, fuck, and I'm, I, yo, I hit, I hit so hard, I forgot to raise my mouth. I just started swinging, but I can't even get my equilibrium back. And I'm swinging anyway to the police just dived on him and dived on me. And they separately they moved me to C95 after that, but I still had his chain on. I had his chain on my neck at the time. I put this shit together with string and everything, yeah? Hmm. And where he was from? He's from, um, he's from, uh, Park Slope in Brooklyn. Oh, all right. Off from where I'm from. And he so, was a devil. He bit, He was a little older than you. Or much yeah, older than you. He's much older, but you know, the funny shit is, that I was in Clinton in 90, 1990, he came from Saints in the Clinton. His crime, his name is Choco. Choco was, I knew from the football and though, but I didn't know they was crime. Choco had 100 years, and, and Scotty had 75, and he blew up with three bodies. Mm-hmm. So I was I was, in the, I was in the yard with somebody kept and said, yo, you know, my man G Cash from Marcy probably said, you know, so you know we had beef. So, you know, Scotty, this guy, he said, where? Like, yeah, he in the other side of the building, that's where the jail was broken half, east and west. I was on the west side, he's on the east side, I was on the D block side, C block. He's on the F side and all that. So I'm like, where? Yeah, you know, it's probably here too, Choco. I said, okay, I know Choco was probably, so I went to go see Choco. I told him, I said, yo, see, I heard about that. You know, I don't fuck with him like that. You know, we had a fallout years ago. I said, yeah, but, you know, we here now, so I'm not going to deal with it, so I'll go see him. So I, I said, the kite with G Cash, so I said, listen, first G Cash question, like, yo, you know, shot well here, right? So I told him something on here. He said, oh, no, I didn't know that. I said, yeah, but what's up with you and him? He said, nah, you know, it's all good. He said, yo. I didn't know he knew people that I knew, but I found out later. I was the same scene, wrapped in full green, so that's like his little brother. And he said, uh, this dude named Brett, so that's like his family and shit. So, you know, I mean, I got an issue with him. I don't know. He got something with me, 
you know, it is what it is. But, I, you know, I could, so he told me that. But I said to make a kite anyway. I said, yo, listen, man, if you got an issue, man, we can meet up at church. I'll go to church and Catholic services on Sunday. I had Jimmy Lee and him come with me. You know what I'm saying? That was my little man. He knows he's from the Bronx. That's yeah. my boy. That He's going to come hold me down. I thought about the Spanish dude. About it. Catholic service had a lot of Spanish dudes in there, so I was gonna go. But he wound up stabbing somebody on the other side of the building. A Muslim dude had beef with the same thing that ran into him and shit. So he wound up leaving the building. I seen him do it again in Wendy, and and two, two the second time I came back, two thousand and two thousand and fourteen. Yeah. All right. That's and after was, that's after that stuff happened with Dude, right? Huh? That's I, I, that, first since it was two thousand and six with, with um. Uh, with, with, and Wendy, and then I carried over to Clinton in 2008, yeah? Mm. Yeah, so now, this is, this is why I came back to Wendy the second time, and then I was in the mess hall, and I seen him in the mess, I said, oh, shit, he got a little chubby, he had some muffin cloths on, wallaby claw, he always get fly in the ponytail, and I said, Scotty, oh, shit. So I'm like, yo, I stand there, look at him, I said, oh, what's up, man? And he go, he at the table sitting out two steps away. Oh shit, yo, what's up? I said, yo, yeah, yo. You remember me, right? Said, of course, man, HBM. Like, oh shit, this nigga remember me, eh? Mm-hmm. When I got a little older or something, they ain't recognized me. That nigga said, yeah, HBM. I said, yo, man, I ain't seen you since. I think I seen that one, that one time I was in Clinton together, we didn't get to see each other. Yeah, 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 this guy here and shit. I said, we're going to see each other then. Oh, then I found out he worked in a gym. I go to the gym with him, he worked in a gym, and we shook hands and hugged and all that shit. That shit was about nothing, you right? Mm-hmm. We, oh, Ain't work out for him, working out and all that, man. You be out and trust you like that, but it's just that I knew the people that he knew that knew me that he felt bad that he didn't have to happen like that back then, but and he had no grudges and shit. But uh, we started working out together and all that for like like nine months together, you know what I mean? That's crazy. Nigga, you poked I, up. Yeah, he pulled out. That's just crazy, bro. Just to see him after all them years. He slept on me real bad and he said it, bro. Gross. And you always been a big dude, right? I always been tall. I just got big. I should be skinny. I just put up a picture of me. Oh, 20, 21 years old and shit. She's skinny as fuck, bro. Man. I just got picked. I say like the Southport. I start putting on weight. You know all them pies. You know about them pies, bro. Yeah, yeah. I was once once the nigga told me how to make them. You heard? I was making them joints all the time because I was, there's a lot of stuff I wasn't eating. Yes. Plus, plus I um I was getting cooked food for this dude working cadre. I had my wife send him food. He cook good and shit. He'll cook food and smuggle over. Plastic bags and give them to me when they do the feet up, yeah? Dad, you had the hookup, bro. Southport? Cool? Me, Dizzy, and a lot of people hookups. We had clippers, I had a Walkman, I had like four tapes, you know what I'm saying? Like mirrors, all types of shit, bro. That's... They had like, we had the clippers in this cell and shit. I just keep the mirror in my cell and the Walkman. We just split it up, you know, we, we share it and shit. How much, <laughs> how, how much box time you gave them in all. In, in, out of all the time you've been locked up, have you ever counted it up? Because I counted mine up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I gave the first time I was in the box for eight, it's for, no, eight, eight years and seven months, you heard? Eight years and seven months. Yeah, I did. I did from, well, I can say box, seven years and seven months. Because the first year I was in the snake pit, then I went to the box. And um, I went to the box in uh, nine, seven, and then I didn't come out until 2004. I went to Wendy. Because what happened was, they gave me three years for a situation with Pimp and Tom Cross. They gave me three years for that, for writing a letter and intercepting a letter. I ain't know I was about no mail watch back then. And they gave me three years for that. And then when I was in Southport, they gave me a time cut. But then right before I was supposed to get out the box, in June of 2000, they, 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 they PK'd me to Comstock because there were too many big homies. SI, Magoo, me, a lot of us was in Southport. They trying to split us up now. So they moved me out to Comstock. I guess the I guess it's gonna be to go to Comstock, get out in June, and go to Population there. That ain't even happened. Soon, soon as my days get off, I'll deport and everything in the box. I have my shit packed and ready to go to Population. And the police, the police that, that hired me came and said, "Yo, you know you're not going to Population." I said, "Nah, what are you talking about?" He said, "Oh, and he called and um, then Superintendent Security sent a sergeant with the um ASEG report. ASEG, you're like, oh man, so, but I already know ASEG. Ain't no, you, you don't know when the fuck you get out. So." Mm-hmm. Ass seg me, bro. They had me ass seg for additional forty eight months, bro. Out after the three years I did the boxing ring. That's when you was yeah. in Comstock. Yeah, they had me ass seg. I was in B, but they left me. In the, they never let me out. They just left me in the, in the box. I was in B one from like two thousand June to like two thousand and four March, and then he moved me. No, two thousand three March, but he moved me to F block because 
the old superintendent retired and this dude Green, I was deputy superintendent of security, he became, and he said he don't want people like me and ASEG and B1 to so now. I ain't got no, they try to cut off my ass to the population. They sending me food and all that shit over there. You no know, cakes and Randy Love is sending me mad cakes. A lot of dudes are showing me love and shit. I'm mm-hmm. um, shooting all, all of us in constant population and they move my ass to F block and that ain't a dungeon. Had me going to a couple of this foul ass rat nigga, um, Colin Ferguson. And they ratting on everything. Oh, all right. Yeah, I heard about him. <laughs> he, all that stuff that he was doing up there. What he was doing up there. They just ratting on people for no reason. Just ratting like, I heard, he was, I heard he was screaming down, like the police was doing his count. I heard the police, he was like, such and such smoking weed. They all, they all 13 cell over here, went to the visit yesterday, and they smoking marijuana right now. Right now. Hurry up, catch him. What the fuck? That nigga bug out. No street dude. That dude was calling police on dudes in the town that was selling drugs in his block in Flatbush. Just called the police and they selling drugs on my block. You know Who, Colin saying? Ferguson? Yeah. In the street? He was, yeah, he wasn't no street dude. That nigga, that nigga, what happened with him was... No, I know he wasn't no street dude. Yeah, but that nigga was telling him that he was calling the police on the block. Like, Flatbush, you know, you got the rough block, but you got the residential block. You got a couple of houses in the blocks, some nice tenement buildings, but they nice buildings. Like, you got dudes on that block trying, just starting to sell drugs, the crack era. And this dude was just telling on him, bro, calling the police on him. But the dude that he was telling on wasn't into that life, but he's knocking the nigga off and all that. You know what I mean? They just... Get the fuck off the block after a while. Mm-hmm. Like, doing, but I don't know why he's doing it. Why he's doing it then? Like nobody was fucking with him. He was doing it for no reason, bro. And that nigga went and did that crazy ass crime. That nigga's crazy, bro. And they, then, tried, they tried to play. They could play his own attorney. How the that was the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life, bro. Yeah, that nigga crazy. <laughs> he said that nigga said, "Man, do you see the guy in this room, the courtroom right now, that did the shoot? That ducked behind the table, she couldn't see him." My nigga, what's wrong with you, man? You they they had him and Adam Aseg too, right? He had Aseg, hell. Oh, so when they had you and who you was up there Adam Aseg with? Um, most of the company was regular people, but the only person with Aseg was me, him, um, um, Patty Proctor, that is, that, that, is, that, is, that, is, that um, escaped from Elmira and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they, they didn't get away with it. They made it outside, but I was probably went. Patty Proctor and, and Billy Blake, who really... Is the longest lasting person. He's still in ass. They even had sex in '87. He's the first one in New York State to become ass sex. They didn't even have ass sex in New York State until him. They made it because him because he was IPC, but the criteria of IPC couldn't hold him forever. So they made up ass sex. They adopted it from other states on how they do it, the procedure, how they go about it, and they created it just for him. And even had ass sex in '87. To this day, he's still in ass sex. What's his name? Billy Blake, white dude from Syracuse. Mm. Well, he, he got, he, he got a, he, was a serial killer or something? Nah, nah, he's locked up for robbery, but he's a, a violent, he's a, a violent assistant family offender. So they gave the judge, gave him a lot of time for robberies and shit. So now, he doing that time, he go, he, he, he had to go to outside, outside court for an uh, outside trip. And when he went outside, somehow, he snatched, he tried to make, make it out by snatching the, um, the, the transport, transportation officer gun, and demanded release him and they try to rush whatever and he wound up shooting one of them killing him and shit. So now when he now he's going to court for that and he blew trial and they gave him a lot of time and um I think they gave him like fifty years, something like that, on top of what he already had. And when he was in court and they sentenced him to that extra time, mm-hmm. he told the judge that he told the judge right then and there, that's okay. I'm gonna fucking escape one day and come back and chill your whole fucking family. I know where you live. Mm. And they had they, they locked him down for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Adam said, "That's crazy." Yo, let me let us let us back up a little. You went through a lot with the, riding with that Don Moon, man. You went through a lot. You did a lot of box time, Adam yeah. said time. You heard, and um, you also you also was part of that. Um, you was there when the, all that stuff jumped off at the Attica. You heard. Definitely. So can you take can you take the bros back? Take take the people back to what you could remember about Attica. What happened with the blood with Kai and all them brothers? How that? How did that? How did the bloods get into the war with the police? Yeah. All right. So what happened was let's just start with Pimp. I heard the other story that was told. There's a lot of misconstruction in that story. So Pimp situation with Pimp was Mac had wrote me prior to me knowing Pimp even came to Attica and told me that one dude is getting devoted. He no longer has this spot no more, and also Pimp is a, a, a memory. He no longer part of the family. So I didn't know Pimp came to the bill. So now I got the letter a week and a half, two weeks later. Somebody sent me a kite like, yo, OG Pimp is in the building and shit, boom, boom. 
yo, how that's working out because he's saying that he got the feeling he's an OG, so or something to that extent. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I say word out now, nah. you know, so be Hellraiser and Lion got everything, man. They they got shit in control, right? Mm-hmm. So now that was that. So I when I found out he was there, I wrote kind of a kite and song. This is what I heard was going on in Allen. I don't want to get to detail that because it's not about temp, but I was saying that he was doing like some unethical shit in the Allen, dealing with homies and shit like that, abusing the situation. I said, but well, Mac wanted you out. I'm not going to do that for now. I'm going to let that ride, but, bro, you got to get together. Then t- some brothers wrote me, I think Lil Taz, and then King, one of the Shaw Boys, King wrote me that. He basically tried to press him, whatever, for this shit. They was going out and getting it. He's trying to press him, whatever. So I'm like, that's it. So i like, yo, fuck it, you got to go. So D.I. used to be light power and heat, right? He mm-hmm. come, he the back of his cell, the lights go out, or fuses and shit like that. I said, yo, let it be known. Tell him, and I said, that that dude got to go. That's it. Boom. Matter of fact. Um, Tank K wanted me to bring Steve O in, so I'm gonna send. I got a ticket right here. I'm gonna send it to you later. I got the phone. Mm-hmm. So you, yeah, send it to me so I can put it up. Yeah, so yeah, you can put it up. You want to? I just wanted you to see it. No, no, I, no, I could blur it out, but you know, yeah, yeah. So, this, this, this is the picture video. Yeah. So Steve, I'm like, yo, Steve O, I like, uh, tell Steve and Alan because he doesn't know you got me coming on the G shine. Go put some work in for that. Boom. So Steve O went to the yard, same time, whatever. He tried to move on him. Him, I guess blocked it. And he never got cut. Or nothing. He blocked it. And they started fighting, and that was it. Always locked him down. At some point, I guess Kent wrote Mac. And Mac had wrote me and said, "Yo, we're gonna give another chance." He, you know, he changed. You know what I'm saying we're gonna give him another chance, man. I'm like, what the fuck? He wrote me all this shit, and I'm like, all right, fuck it. I, I'm, all, I'm all for it. So that was that. Now that was way before the situation. That had not do with Kent not going to the mess hall. That, that was him was already there. Kent already got moved on by what you call by um Steve. Steve, oh yeah. So now. As time go on, I'm in the I'm in the box because I sent a letter to Mac. I didn't know that about no no um. That's the first time I called him the last time, but for the mail watch, I'm telling Mac and the kite like, yo, the situation with Pimp is handled. He's a mystery. Steve O rough sex the other day. Try to run. Now, this when I found out. I first heard he moved on him. I thought he got him, but I found out later he didn't get him. You know, he just got to a fight, misfire. So then I also mentioned Tom Cross there saying that the situation Tom Cross. The semi take care, but the dude gangster like that at him, but the really close one that one. This course had this other dude on the sideline, you know what I'm saying? A boss light in the head, you know, that helped the cross out, but it ain't really going nowhere and shit. But before that, Tom Cross was winning though, because the dude was coming at him, he had a little team, they was they was they was on top of the spot the scoreboard, you know? So they did so so Bloods did try to get at Tom Cross in Attica. But the first time they tried to get him, this dude, Shogun, this nigga pulled us out, kind of stunning pull. He went at Fat Cat Son and said, hey, you know the difference between Fat Cat Son and Tom Cross? They're two different, they look different. But he, he went at them, at, but Cross knew that was for him. So Cross people just moved too. And a couple only got hit, a couple got hit in the head with a weight or something. That only got hit. Somebody on his side got hit. But Cross never got hit. And the next time, I think it was some shit in the hallway. And then Cross got around that. And the last thing was Light. I sent word to Light, take care of that. So Light was in D Block, the school building. He seen Cross and uh, he he pops on Cross, had a rush across and hit him. Cross grabbed him, they start struggling, and this dude named Pippin from Rochester hit light in the head with the um the mop bucket, the mop ringer, the mop ringer part. This plastic, but it still hurt. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And after that, Cross wound up getting locked down and shit. But he went to the box. When Cross went to the box, they did this, they did this time he lapsed after the seventies, so he got a he got around it and um came out. But when he came out, I already got a ticket. Mentioning him and my kite to Matt. So they swapped. They, they, they moved me to the box to his set. Who the motherfucking um, my set, you heard? In the state pit. Mm, they, took, they took Cross out of his set and put you in it. Yeah, and put him in my set. <laughs> this is what does. Mm. And my ticket was about him. So now I'm in the box. So they said a little time went on. It's like August. I go in the box August. Then October came. That's when everything went crazy. We, we hear somebody new, somebody new coming in. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, wait, who the fuck that coming? That's it. Oh, like DI. So DI finally gets trans. So we got open sound on company. He probably coming over here. He sure did. He can't walk right by me. He seen me nod his head. Got himself. That was that. So now, he, he tells me, yo, watch what happened. He said, yo, man, I was in the hospital for, 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 for some days and shit. What happened? He said, yo, man, I was, I was coming. That's what he said. Seven years lost a wreck. Nah, he went to the yard that night, night before that. He said, Kalucci said some slick shit to him about all this time we didn't know who you was. We find out that you're part of the gang too. Because they ain't no job at Joe a little while. So you're a fucking mentor. Oh, we got your number. We'll be seeing you. And Devon said, 
I said, whatever, or some slick shit. And then next morning, they said they came to my cell. I was in pajamas. I was looking at, um, on t- I was looking at TV. So they came to my cell. I heard my gate crack. By the time I looked at something, see what, they already came to go. Have you been to Attica before? Yeah, I was in Attica. I went home from Attica. When they, when they come home down the company, and when the cell crack, they get to like, maybe you can sell away from your cell, and they swing the stick, or the, the, the signal the points up front to open the gate. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they rush up. He said he rushed up in the cell. Three officers in the college because get that motherfucker. He's talking shit. And they, they, they stop. They, they bend, me, bend me up, swinging on me, punching on me. And all that, I went to the hospital and shit. I said, oh, man. The brother said, yeah, man, the niggas got me. But, yo, Kai came up there, too. I said, what happened with Kai? He said, yo, Kai, what, what happened was Kai was, was in the mess hall that afternoon. That happened in the morning time, like 9 o'clock in the morning. When Kai was in the mess hall, like he, the brother said the car it was never in the car. It was in the mess hall. All right. right? And he cut no police that day. Nobody did nothing that day, actually. Nothing. So Kai was in the mess hall waiting. So on the line, and the dude told him, a neutral dude said, yo, I remember the dude name back then, I can't remember now, it was neutral dude, he's like, yo, cop, you heard about that shit this morning with D.I.? Now where I went D.I.? Nah, now you remember that alarm went off? Yeah, I remember that. They said, that was, that was Carlucci, and they jumped D.I., they jumped D.I. I was a mentor at the time. Kyle, like a little serious Harlem dude, like, you know, he'll play games. He's like, what? Yeah, I heard about him. I like, oh, fuck that shit. The closest one to him was a lady CEO in the mess hall. It's usually, there's four police in the mess hall at that time, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. give time. Cops walked up on her and snuffed her, locked her, dropped her, knocked her the fuck out, right? Mm-hmm. Police ran from the police, the three police out left in the mess hall, and one day, I guess they pulled a pen, more came, they started whooping him out and dragging him. They didn't want to do too much in the mess hall, they didn't want to incite no riot, and they, 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 they dragged him out to the car and closed the door, locked the door, and the police told everybody to sit down, more police is surrounding the mess hall, everybody stay where they at, they fucked cop. So D.I. said cop came to the hospital that same day when I was up there. Mind, I was like three days had passed already. He said, and he they, they got him real bad that he fractured his rib or something. Yeah, right? mm-hmm. he sent a message to him with the, the follow on hospital porter. So that was that. So now I'm like, all right, so where the fuck the follow up to DI? Like, that's gonna be a follow up, trust me. It's gonna be a follow up. So now uh, I'm in the box. So I'm bugged upstairs on third floor about to go to population. I said, yo, man, when you go out there, tell them what's up with the response to that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm letting them know. But they already was planning. They was already planning it anyway. I didn't send no official word. They was planning it anyway. So they was planning on going to the mess hall, going to a mess hall, and just getting busy. It's usually because four police men. So they had a plan where uh, I think it was 16 of them made it. So now Pimp didn't come. Hitman didn't come. Um, Gambino didn't come. Can I tell you why? No. I'm not sure why they didn't come. I don't know. I know. I I, I doubt it was about Pimp saying, I, I ain't going to mess hall. I ain't going to go now. Because nobody said that, that's, that's been critical to his history right there. You heard? Mm-hmm. That, that's like you hanging yourself. So I think Pimp just didn't go for whatever reason. And also, I also heard later that there was a, all the miscommunication when they going, the time they going. It was like misconstrued. Because remember, this, this is mess is going from block to block, C block and A block and all that. So they, everybody mis, 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 misunderstanding who's what and and first they say it's going to happen in the breakfast. Then they said, no, it's going to happen at lunch. So now they know we got to regroup and rethink it. So now do. So it was like a lot of that going on. Because for one, I know Ungad Men don't get busy. He don't care about no fighting with boys. I don't watch him get busy with boys a few times. So I know he, he ain't scared for, for no action, right? Yeah? Mm-hmm. So, um, and who you knows? Ken Pyde would have went. And did, man. But a lot of these dudes, I'm not making excuses for them. But I, don't, I think the communication was off because everybody wasn't in the same block. So and I was in Attica, so I could go with that. How how are you going to communicate that so quickly? You heard yeah, was, the block, the block in Attica. So, some people were saying it happened too fast and everybody didn't know what time to meet up, what child they going to do with that, dinner, but they ain't no shit. So that's what happened with that. So now, uh, by that time, Pimp had already wrote back and you know, pleaded this case. Like I told you, Max said, yo, we're going to rock, whatever. So he's still back in the whip. So when that shit happened was, it was he had some names, right? It was Charles, right? Mm-hmm. Supreme Oak. Oh. It was motherfucker. He mentioned he mentioned Madman, Madman from Webster, the little Madman. Um, mm-hmm. It was it was um, Bruiser from Brooklyn. It was quite a few. But Lion wasn't involved. With that. I don't know why he put Lion. But Lion wasn't there for that. So now Lion's already boxed and cut this dude down the face. So now they go to the mass hall and they just made an impromptu like scheme. How they gonna do it? And they decided it's sixteen of us. So fuck it. Four, you know, four go that way. Us four go that way, other four go that way, you find another four go that way. So it's four police, 16 of us, four of us on each police. That's how they planned it out real quick in the mess. So impromptu shit. Okay. So they did their thing. They just spread out, boom, rushed the police. It just got real ugly. I was, that shit came in the news in the box. I was having my head for this shit in the news. 
They supposed to have concussion and multiple contusions. They just beat the police to their own stick. At least Madman from the Bronx was. He would take the police stick and start hitting police in the head. That was on the floor, still fighting. Then the other homies on the had him on the floor. He hit him in the head. You know, they got him on camera doing that shit and everything. But that was like, it's got ugly. I'm in the, I'm in the boxer. That's how it's supposed to be. Like, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. now, um, people start now, you know, they, I think they, they tear gas the mess hall and people had to go to A Block Yard. Now, I'm on the second floor on the bottom. I can't see A Block Yard. But the homies upstairs, Sunday and them, that's um, Sunday is what you call um, Thief in the Bronx and shit. Al G, brother. Al G from Brooklyn. I okay. said, hold them up. But they can see the yard, and they give me play by play. Yo, it's mad. I can tell they homies, they walk around, they got red hoodies on, all that, and sweatshirt. They walk around in a circle in the yard, just walk around, and us is against the wall. So it's like they separate, but the homies is walking around and shit. And some niggas, I'm like, some niggas that probably fuck with homies. I really can't see the face like Hitman, because he's tall with a dread. So they, that Hitman right there, too. So now I said, but Hitman ain't. He ain't getting involved. How the fuck you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. y'all, so now, uh, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, the news came on. They talk about the news and, and the local news and addicts and shit, uh, the town news. And then, like one thirty in the morning, the gate opened up. Police came to my cell and said, "Get dressed." I'm like, fuck, where I'm going? He said, "You're going to you're going to draft." Now I, I'm CMCA, so I'm always going middle of night anyway. Most times, so I, 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 I like, all right, fuck it. I got dressed, they, they, they handcuffed me to the bars, they pulled me out, took the little, ran a little room in the box, they searched me again, you new setup or whatever. Mm-hmm. They searched me again, left my property, said, what about my property? Don't worry about it, you get your property. And they, 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 um, they had me sitting in that little room, that little like isolated room, you get, you get searched at, through the door, and they waited, about like a half an hour later, they said, ready. They took me out, took me outside, put me on the van, got a sergeant and three police. I'm like, I think these things are going to kill me right now, yeah? Mm-hmm. Let me straight to South Fork and shit. They put me on, they put me on uh, reception uh, on B on uh, B four, and I was right next door to J Dub. I didn't even know it. Um, it was like three o'clock in the morning. I got there, and he's knocked on my wall. Yo, uh, who just who just moved over here? I ain't answer. But he said, Yo, next door, two sir. I said, What's up, man? He said, You move next door. I said, Yo, bro, I'm not. All right, we gotta go through 21 questions, bro. Like, I just moved here from Africa. Right, what's your name? I said, Not what's your name? He said, Are you talking to J Dub? I said, oh shit, and I told him, I said, oh shit, I was fucked up, fuck, I asked him what happened. You talking to the, old, you talking about the old time of J-Dub? Yeah, I didn't know you right there, he came from Auburn at the time. Yeah, so, that's the like, big yeah, bro, I was with him at Wendy. So he's talking, whispering, he's like, you know, late at night, he said, yo, I told him what happened, he said, I said, you didn't motherfuckers told me that they got word that I sent word out, I'm the big homie, I sent word out. He said, I can apparently try to say that, but some of the dudes getting you know, beat up on, and they were saying, we had to do it, because shot well. To do it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're really sent no official word, they did that on their own, but I was all for it. I told them that you know, what's up, tell what's up, that response, but they already had a plan to do it themselves anyway, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, as I said, well, I didn't say, yo, man, I'm surprised that they didn't move you to D block with Farmer. I said, nah, what's D block? That's my first time in South 97, out of all history, I didn't he said, nah, it's like the dungeon, man. You go there, you ain't got you ain't like out here, it's like you know, box inside the box. you talking about Southport D block. Yeah, Southport D Block. Oh, all right. Um, Southport D Block was like the dungeon? Yeah, it is the dungeon. I'm, I'm telling you right now. So I'm like, well, I'm, at least I'm here. I said, man, you lucky. Man, yo, uh, the next morning, they said, pack up, you moving. I'm like, where I'm going? He said, you're you 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 moving from here. They just took me right down to guessing nigga Jake up, jinxed the shit out of me, bro. <laughs> they put me, so when I get the D Block, it's, so I'm just down there. He's on two gallery. Mm-hmm. And my man, Bob T-Rock, was the one that down with that shit. The hostage situation in comp and, and you heard about the hostage situation in, in um, Kasaki back in 88, 89, 89, I think, 88, 89? No, I never heard about it. And he also stabbed the police in the box in, 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 in um, um, I think it was Eastern. With a gate. With a dude named T-Rock? Yeah, T-Rock from Queen. So he's in there. So they moved me in the first, on uh, once, or uh, one, one cell on one gallery. But that shit, they got plexiglass and they come feed you. They did, a, they did that shit where they put the food in this, this box put the box into the slot, they go up the slot from the top, get stick in the box. Yo, you go to the shower, these niggas got vests on, like vests and fucking helmets, and it's like three police and, and that standing and other two put the handcuffs on you and escort you to the shower and lock in the shower and they go get the next person. Like all type of extra shit for no reason, you heard? Crazy. I was in that shit for like two months. I kept writing, you know, like listen, I ain't causing no problem down here. I don't know why you got me down here. I want to go on regular business. I want to go so they finally after while they took it, they took farm out too. He used to write a lot. And after a while, they see you and you chilling, call no problem, let you back out. The regular companies and shit, so that's not going to be the regular company. That part. So now, the, the, I'll tell you about the shit with Pimp. 
Now, Pimp goes to El Mayo. He was they, nobody took his name because he, that was his name. That was no blood name. That, that ain't belong to us. That's his name. You can't. They, he called himself No Love, and that happened way after Attica. But Pimp did. Pimp went to um, Elmira, and right over at the time, Tom Cross Elmira. However, even though I was instrumental in the situation at Attica, trying to get homies to get at him, by the time he went to Elmira, I already found out the real deal. Ty was never blood. Right? And Mac and Ty never had no ties in California. It was no blood. I started learning a lot of history that Mac was given was incorrect history. It was mixed up shit from California all the way to Chicago. So that time it's like fell back from all the buttons and all that. I like, I ain't fuck with that. So now Mac is on his own. He's writing Elmira to get at Tom Cross. So Pemp already knew about the situation with um with Ty not being blood. So when he was at Elmira, the brother Raz from Queen that's cool with Tom Cross and he also know Pemp, he brought them together. Um, there was never no pressure because Tom Cross personally, I got the email I can show you, said that shit ain't happen like people say, don't believe that. I, I already knew because Raz told me what happened. There was no pressure, just went over him, told him this is what it is, who I am, boom, I ain't looking for no problems about that type of shit, but you know, I'm gonna defend myself and to go down, it ain't gonna be nice. And people like, listen, I ain't getting involved in none of that shit because I found out the truth about Ty and a lot of shit, so I ain't got nothing to do with that, yeah? Mm-hmm. That was that. So there was no punk, he got punked or nothing. So now, Max, uh, Start saying that, yo, he out the whip and that whole El Myers will call that flip side park. Everybody over there ain't did nothing. So Kemp said, fuck it, I'm out, fuck it. They call Matt back, you no love for me, call me no love type shit. I'm ad living that, but that's how they, he created that name, no love for himself, you heard? All right. And 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 respectfully to correct, every time that I always say in my any of my stories about Pimp getting stepped to by um Tom Cross. That was the way that I always uh, that I heard it in um, Southport because I heard a, I heard a story when it happened. I was right down the block in Southport at the time. You heard in A Block with Star no, Money Murder, Bush. No, I was on company with Bush. Um, Robo Just. I used to go out. I used to go go out there to, um to the cages with Robo Just and Shorty yeah. Black. You heard? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They try to give me. G- um, Shorty Black tried to give me um four star general G and B. You know what I'm okay. saying? And I turned him down. You heard? Because I told him I wasn't gonna change my set. Nine tray just for a, a position in, in another person's set. You heard? Right. So, so that's only that's only like want to clarify that now. Yeah, I, but, don't, I don't. And I, don't, I, and I, don't, and I clarify why I always say that Tom Cross stepped the um pimp because I heard I heard I heard that story in the port and I heard the um Matt murder story in the port. You heard? Well, he stepped he stepped to him, but he didn't. You know, it was like dudes adding their own little twist to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they made it seem like 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 he, he punked out though. You heard? Yeah, he said it wasn't like that. He said I actually like that. You know what I'm saying? Because didn't because didn't they take his his little position after that too? Nah, whatever Mac did, I just know Mac faded him. Whatever over that situation, and Pepper spell back and said, "Fuck it, my name ain't no love." Then. But yeah. we already Pepper already Pepper do the same thing. I knew at that time. We both knew that Mac was no good, and Ty was never blood, and he had no ties to L.A. All that shit was a was a facade. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that issue with Tom Cross was dead. Yeah, that was dead. I did it that shit. I, I wrote his. That's what remember that Mac left. He left everything to me. But it, but it, it was him. true that Tom Cross had every Spanish brother in the jail with him. You heard? Well, not every Spanish. He had a lot of Spanish. He had a New York knife too. It was a and he had a, and I heard he had a New York knife. So if New it would have went knife. down, it would have been ugly. He had that double O. Double O seven. And that's another thing. A lot of the heavy hitters roll with double O sevens, right, bro? Sing Sing was the best for that. Yo, I got there, niggas giving that shit to me. Yo, boy, I got double O for you, double O. Just got this, man. The police is bringing that shit in crazy back then, bro. So you was down there when Blue Boy was down there? Nah, I was there with Blue Boy. Last time I was with Blue Boy is Clinton. Uh, like, uh, he, nah, he came to Clinton in the box. And, and now he was in the box, dog. Last before that, he was in uh, Four Main together. Me and Bogart and all of them. So did Blue ever have any his- issues with the homies? Was that true? <laughs> Cause I I also heard that too when I was in Nap and I turned blood. They said that Blue Boy had was 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 was, was, was doing doing the homies dirty and sing sing. But I, nah, he wasn't even he wasn't even claiming blood then at the time. He, he, he I tell you he don't like bullies, right? Blue Boy went to the box because this tall dude he's from Brooklyn too. Abib, I think his name is. He was working in a hospital and he was stealing the old timers uh, insure that they needed for their health. You know what I mean? Mm. Stealing the population. And Blue Boy stepped to him and something ensued and Blue Boy just hit him. And went to the box back. I don't like bullies, man. He foul. So now he's trying to... But after shit, like, with all the homies, he started seeing that homie like... You know, you know how it was, bro. Yeah. Homie, he what it, what it turned into. 
Blue Boy ain't like it. And then I think one of the incidents happened with, with the old time when I had a chain and Tom stopped. The homie snatched his chain. He had that chain for years and around all the walls and plugs you can think of in the state. And he had that shit from the 80s. And he never took an 18 carat chain and he snatched up the neck. No regards. He is a heavy hitter. He had a name for himself. Everybody knew him. He chased and give him so he snatched the chain. Blue said, fuck that. He just made his own self trip. Nobody even blessed him or nothing, yeah? Oh, so that's why Blue made his self crip because of that. So, he, this thing, he thought he gonna, he gonna turn crip and unite the crips because, you know, like Chuck Guevara said, one ounce of influence can even turn talking to gorillas. So if some of them was punk, I'm, I'm trying to boost them up, man. Get them going, yeah? Oh, it's all like, right. You think about it like this. Tobio, for example, right? Mm -hmm. The men might be in a particular jail and they might be, some of them, some, some get busy. Mm -hmm. Some might be they getting drugs, they getting soft, dudes extorting it. When that nigga come to jail, them niggas turn into motherfucking soldiers out of nowhere. Like, wait, what? Oh shit, these niggas be chest out, pumped up, yeah. Mm -hmm. Blue boy thought he could have the same effect somewhat with the Crips, like give him some type of, you know, give him some type of benefit. Yeah, but it, it ain't work like that. But that's the only reason why he did it. But he ever had an incident, with homies? No, he never had an incident, with homie. He never had to do nothing to a homie. Homie never did nothing to him. He, he, but he's very vocal about it's his Crips and bros that. We gonna live. If not, you know, I'll go gun to gun or whatever. He always did that to people. We approach certain people on some respectful shit. Yeah. Yeah. Respectful shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's how he is. Now I'm gonna give you an example of how Blue Boy is. Well, I don't know if Mikey B can tell you this. Matter of fact, he said on a program one time when Blue Boy first came home, Mikey B. He heard Mikey B had some issue. He didn't know Mikey B heard of him. Heard Mikey B was a good brother and armed him and everything when Wendy. When Mikey B had issue, you know what I mean? All right. Yeah, pull him down. Yeah, Mikey B say that himself. Mm -hmm. He ain't no Mikey B nowhere. He just like. You see people that he feel might be the underdog or don't have no support they told to have, he'll support them, yeah? That's how he is. But I'm not just making that up. Mikey B tell you that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I so, think I heard some Mikey B he, got his relationship he, with him. Check it out. Over some real nigga shit. Check it out. And, and one time he's on IPC and Fire Gallery in Clinton, right? And my man Taziano, he home now. He's Billy at the time. So Taziano came from Population Unit, Key Block, or whatever. So Blue Boy, and um, Taz told me the story too. Blue Boy was on Fire Gallery. Under him was four guys, you know, cost three under that. Dude, a crip on, I mean, a, a, a homie on four guys, we talked to Taz on three galleries, and they started using derogatory terms, you know, crips, you know, um, you know how to say, yeah, yeah. Crap, mm -hmm. walkers and all that. And so Blue Boy is on the gate and said, yo, um, my man on four galleries, right, that's talking. Yo, what's up? Yo, man, um, it's Blue Boy. Yo, what's up? He said, yo, man, I appreciate it, bro, man. If you and the bro down there don't use derogatory terms, Support Crips because, likewise, I got some locs up here. I make sure they respectful. They don't call. They don't use the term slob and none of that. Nobody. So, so the homie said, "All right, no doubt, no doubt. All right, I do that for you, bro. That's respect." So Blue said, "All right, good looking, man. Y'all know you keep a lot. I got a store up here. I'm bringing some food down later. I got some. You want some cookies or something? So, so yeah, I can take some. So I got some chips and cookies. I can give you a little best just for showing respect. Blue's gonna look out for him, right? That's how Blue Boy is. That's crazy, right there. Taz said. Taz said. Hey, yo, who the fuck is that up there? Who you talking to? He said, nah, Blue Boy. Oh, man, fuck that crab nigga. Blue Boy said, oh, my man. What's up with you, bro? I just had a conversation with brother on some, some gentleman shit, and you coming down. What's up with you, man? Fuck you. Suck my dick. Mmm. Oh, Blue Boy, hey, what people talking about? Oh, okay, all right. So now, Taz goes back to population. Time go by. Taz come back to IPC now because the trips was being dropped. Shit popped off because Eli pulled up in the Bronx. And you know, we had that situation with the Billy in the town. You know what I'm saying? Oh, all right. So, about to be, it's, it's about to get a little tick for tack with, with the Billies and the Browns and shit. So, Taz ended up in IPC. So, what Taz do, Taz come on the company and he's seen Blue Boy in the company supporters. So, Taz come down with the match and he was probably in front. And we got about Blue Boy. Blue Boy seen him, they turn around and came on mine. Taz got there and snuffed Blue Boy. And they started they start fighting. And Blue Boy, you know, Blue Boy like a bull. He's strong. He can work out pull-ups and all that. So he, he, he ain't not a good fighter. He's a nice one. But he not, so he pushed him against the gate. What the fuck? Blue Boy confused. Like, who the fuck is nigga that snuffed me, right? Mm -hmm. and I'm up to break it up. Break it up, Rosado. Break it up. Break it up. So he broke him up. So he moved Tad and I. Get the fuck over there. They, they wrestled him out on the company. Put him out of there. He'll find other cell. So he put Taz on 7 Galley on the other side. Because over there you had PC, but you also had IPC in the back of your cell. that couldn't fit on 5 Galley. Remember, 5 Galley also had Keep Lock over there. Yeah. So... Taz, Taz go to sell. But Taz's plan was, and he told me later, his plan was he know how Blue Boy give it up. And he know he ain't had no banger. And he heard a Blue Boy like to stab nigga, and he even caught a body and involved in a couple of shit, some heavy hits. So fuck it. I'm not going to play myself. And that's his territory. 
he said, I was going to snuff the dude so we get to a fight real quick. Now they, now they put me to sale. We both got a ticket. We both locked down. We separated, yeah? Mm. <laughs> he said, and the next day, he hears some talking in the car. He stuck his mirror out. It's Blue Boy. He outside with a whole purple sweatshirt. So I'm like, oh, shit. What the fuck's this nigga doing over there? And he said, I just realized, like, 10 o'clock, 10.30, they didn't give me no ticket for the fight yet. They didn't get no ticket. Because Blue is a porter, so for the day, no, Clinton, Clinton always been like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Bro. Blue Boy finally hear him walking. Like, what's been coming down here? And he came to his cell. Yo, my man, what's up, what's up with you, my man? I don't, I don't know you from nowhere. What's up with you, man? The Taz said, Jameen, what's up with me, man? He said, yo, you snuffed me, man. I don't even know you, bro. What if you got, you snuffed me? So Taz said, I'm Taz. The Blue Boy, he said, Blue Boy said, oh, you the dude that told me to suck your wee-wee, eh? Yeah? Mm. He said, yo, and I respect that because you had the heart, the, 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 the pop. Yo, I like that. Respect, so for what I'm going to do for you, we don't get crazy with it. You know what I'm saying? I can up the hand. You know that. But we're going to come out. When you get adjudicated uh, RPC status, you come outside, then you're going to fight fair one. I want a fair one. Now. You snuffed me last time. But we're going to fight. For the honor respect. If you had respect for the dude, had the nerve. You know, Google, like a lot of dudes wouldn't do that. So, you know, but they heard of his, his, his legacy and all that. So he snuffed. So now the next, he finally go like four or five days later, he go to hearing. And that guy got postponed, you know, he had called witness. Make a long story short, he came out. Finally, Blue Boys, finally he got, they, they finally put a tag on the cell. He's officially IPC. So, yo, put down, rip them off, want my fight. And they said, man, we're going to shake hands with that. So they go to the yard, Taz said, yo, we start fighting. I ain't know how strong this nigga was like a fucking bull. It's mad snow outside. So niggas be fighting. So I caught him one time. The Blue Boys not really a fighter. And I caught him second time. But I take his brush me on. And I, I backpedaled and fell on my back. He said, yo, call this nigga Blue Boy reached down and grabbed me by my jacket. I thought he was about to pound me out, so I blocked my face. The nigga grabbed me by my jacket and lifted me off the feet, off the floor like a little dog. Like, he was strong. Nigga said, yo, let's start over. I'm like, oh, shit, so you official. And he said, we start fighting again and shit. And so it's how we had enough. And the police ain't still here. And I'm ready for war, nigga. I'm still here. Yeah, I'm letting it off. I don't like the way I'm living, but I still wanna live. It's like I'm asking for forgiveness for some shit that I did. I was young, I was only a kid. They say what goes around comes around, but I say it is what it is. I trust nobody. It seems like everybody's a snake. It be your own homies. Try to snatch food off your plate. They be watching every move that you make. Try to do what you do, and they get mad if they do it too late. I got stabbed twice, and I ain't even know I had beef. But most of the time I got a problem, it don't be because of me. It don't matter, niggas know I'm a G. I ain't telling police shit. I hope they don't talk about me. I'm usually the predator, but wind up being prey. How the fuck? I almost died and wind up catching the case. The cameras got a good look in my face. They ain't see me get stabbed, but they see when them niggas got chased. Can't make this shit up. Boy, I could be going to jail, but I was this close to going to hell. I couldn't take that L. Nah, not by no bitch ass niggas. When I die, I'd be a real killer pulling up the trigger.